This is the story of five students at St. Lucie's University. These five converged on one class. The topic was Edgar Allan Poe. The professor was Dr. Reginald Reinhold Lynch. Not sure what killed Poe. Possibly brain congestion or cholera. There are those that think rabies. <laughs> rabies is a bad way to go. Hallucination, delirium, foamy mouth. Yeah, tuberculosis is a definite, maybe. Or suicide. Syphilis? He had syphilis. Did it kill him? Used to kill people back then. Killed Capone. Terrible now. Excuse me, hmm? but I thought this class was supposed to be immersive. Your point? All you're doing is lecturing. Immersively? Mr. Brown! Present. Would you say that this class is immersive? You had me at brain congestion, baby. Well, if the groundskeeper says so. From the east to the west, till it takes us away! The inverted bell curve. All grades in this area drop to an F, leaving only two grades that jump to A's. And those are Bud and that guy. I call this one the rack. A, C, A. Everyone else fails. You don't want to be here or here. The Widowmaker. Everyone fails. You can't fail everyone and call it a curse. Mr. Brown, you just received an A on my quiz. Prodigious. After the first few weeks of Lynch's antics, only our five students remained. Ashbeer Brethwaite, named Mia by his peers, developed a taste for matriarchal authority figures from early exposure to the communist feminist homemaker magazine, The Red Dress. During his visit to SLU, the school arranged a meeting with the head of women's studies. I find that males struggle to accept the fact that women at university are in control of their own destiny. Our goal is to become an institutional contraceptive to protect women from the impregnation of male chauvinism. Despite his best efforts, Ashby arrived in Lynch's class. This is a mistake. I'm supposed to be enrolled in Dr. Rosenberg's feminist politics. Oh, we have a website for that. You just go online and you can adjust your schedule. 
yourself. But couldn't you just hit a button and remove it from my schedule? But that's why we have a website. The registrar granted Ashbury's request, yet due to a computer glitch, he found himself in Lynch's class. Winona's mother left when she was young, leaving her in the care of her father. Winona, your father has a rare disorder I call a socio decorum syndrome, or ASS. In short, it causes impaired social judgment. And so the engine says, I invited her to my wigwam to smoke my peace pipe, and all I got was a buffalo jerky. She did a senior research paper on ASS. The paper won her a scholarship to SLU. She enrolled in Lynch's class when his bad behavior was diagnosed as ASS. Great Gatsby, Mrs. Hamilton. You're the spitting image of a Taiwanese prostitute I frequented on a train ride to Calcutta. Hey, that's Dad. my wife you're talking about. Let's take it outside. It's a compliment, man. What's the problem? Brittany Wilcox enrolled in SLU to study Glonet Macrocosmonomics, an experimental synthesis of global, internet, super, and microeconomics. Thus leading this tribe in Ghana to benefit from both the mining industry in Australia and the pornography industry in Van Nuys, California. Now, After arguing that math, post stories should be cross-listed for literature, math, science, and art, Brittany's attorney noted an oddity in the SLU bylaws. Cross-listed courses must satisfy all classes for which they are cross-listed. Brittany thus satisfied four courses with one class. Bud Polinsky had loved Brittany since they were children, though he was too timid to admit this. They arrived in Poe stories due to a Faulkner-like romanticizing of the poor, which fueled his concern for social justice. Social justice is not somebody else's problem. It's our problem. Bud's interest in the poor led him to misread Poe stories as stories by the urban <laughs> underprivileged. Joseph Jefferson's interest in Lynch was deeper than his peers. Joe's father vicariously encouraged him to pursue botany. Mr. Jefferson became a fan of Lynch when he developed the Preston Award-winning drug from the algae of Niagara Falls. I'm just not enjoying intimacy with my husband the way I used to. Bill? He seems so great. The romance has dried up. I know just the thing. Niagara. Try it today and release the torrent in you. The success of Niagara enabled Lynch to leave his professorship. Determined to try his hand at literature, he wrote a children's series on the works of Poe. The deed was done. I dismembered the corpse and hid it within the floorboards. But Lynch's independence would not last. Following a string of Niagara-induced paralysis, there arose a longer string of lawsuits. His resources drained by litigation, Lynch returned to SLU. Joe enrolled that fall semester. He planned to secure a spot in Lynch's botany class. But Joe found that Lynch was teaching only one class on the works of Poe. Despite his lack of interest in poetry, Joe registered for the class with high expectations. This is going to be good. What an a-hole. Yeah, what an a-hole is right. I think he's awesome. Yeah, you would. You're pulling A-pluses with half-written papers. <laughs> but pulling an A-plus out of this guy? Yeah, can you believe that? What the hell, man? You know what? Hold on a second, Mia. Hey, but I'm getting another call. How do I, uh, switch lines? Pull the ball. Pull the ball. Hello? What'd you get on your paper? Brittany? I am not a C student. You got a C? Yeah. What, do you know Bud got an A plus? An A plus? A plus? Wait, hold on one second. I got me on the other line. Ashbury, you're on with Brittany. Do you know she got a C? You got a C? I know, right? Joe, what'd you get? I got a no. A no? Yeah, a no. A no? What's a no? The better one I got, I gotta get your turban out of your ash, ash hole. Clever. Told me to get my ass back to my own country. And what country is that? Oh, hang on, I'm getting another call. Hello? This guy's an ass clown. <laughs> you're just in time. Hang on, one sec. Hey, you're on with uh, Joe and Brittany. What were you saying? I was saying this guy's an ass clown. What'd you get? 
string of sexual innuendo. <coughs> Bloody hell. What? Really? I didn't peg him as a goth guy. Neither did I. Don't worry, he'll make his rounds. He published it in 1838. I think it was the next year he became editor of Burton's Gentleman's Magazine. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It was the summer of 1839. Same year they took the first photo of the moon. <laughs> Unfortunately, Gentleman's Magazines weren't as interesting back then. They were actually for gentlemen. <laughs> Too bad, huh? Would have liked to see Poe get into porn, huh? <laughs> you got something to say, Midnight? You know, I shot commies in the war. Even took out a few she-soldiers. Pinko trash. Can we think of any stories that include, say, an eye fetish. Anyone? Anyone at all? Hmm. Uh, black cat. The black cat? You hot for animals, son? <laughs> the black cat. <laughs> what a troglodyte. <laughs> Maybe you should hire Bud as your tutor. <laughs> Quiet! Mr. Polinsky is trying to sleep. I mean, he's got to have brain damage. That's the only possible explanation for his behavior. School chalks it up to asocial decorum syndrome. Why are you smoking those things? I can't quit. I'm addicted. <laughs> Guys, he's a Preston Award-winning scientist, OK? He can't have brain damage. I don't care. His, his racial slurs don't even make sense anymore. Uh, yesterday, I was a border bunny. Today, I'm a Chinaman. What racial slurs would make sense? You know, I don't even care what the explanation is. I just want him to stop running my GPA into the ground. I guess we have to go back in there. Hey, where'd a bud go? All right. I had to go find Bud. I'll meet you guys in there. Come on. Judy? Oh, it's you. You know, I'd prefer that you call me Dr. Rosenberg. Or better yet, just don't call me. So formal, Judy. I like that. Hmm. You know what I love about communists? No, and I'd prefer to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. For all their lofty talk about the ladies, it's always the cock that rules the roost. Hmm. How do they <sighs> do it? Huh? Bud? Bud? Introduce Roscoe Tesla Brown. Before. Hey, you're a student of botany. Well, I have something that a person of your advantages will appreciate. 
Oh, yeah, no, I'm good, man, thanks. It's too bad. It's not every day a person synthesizes orange diesel and jack hair into a genotype with a pathogen index of zero. I call it Jack Diesel. You did what now? Yeah, so that's just been my life, you know, going to conferences and expos. My dad loves all things botany. And you don't? Well, I love my dad. That's not what I asked you, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm okay at it, I guess, you know, but as a career, I don't know. Hmm. Looks like botany's not the only thing you're good at. You like that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Hey, actually, bud, man, we gotta get going, dude. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy class, boys. What's with you? That prick's what's with me. What do you call you this time? No, well, it's not that. It's just... <sighs> Never mind. Is Bud high? Yeah, he's high. Gentlemen, you have something to share with the class? You got something for me, Tonto? No? How about you? No, I'm sorry, sir. No, we were just... Talking real quick, I'm sorry. All right, all right, I can dig it. Let's talk. Mr. Jefferson, is it? Yeah, that's right. Like the Jeffersons? You moving on up? <laughs> My man Bud knows that one, huh? <laughs> you should too, Mr. Poitier. Oh, forgive me, Sir Poitier. So, Mr. Jefferson, I hear you know a little something about botany. Yeah, a little. That's good. You know, I know a little something about botany, too. Let's have a pop quiz. Oh, no, yeah, I'd rather not. Okay. Plants are an extraordinary thing. You know, if I wanted to breed a butterfly with two heads, I could do that by feeding a caterpillar a common hormone suppressant. Any idea which one? No idea. African bugleweed. Yeah, that, that's a tough one. Let's try this. Name a dioecious plant that is safe for humans to ingest, but deadly if administered intravenously. Nutmeg. Pity. Well, here's one you'll probably know. What weed is currently illegal, but was grown by both George Washington and Thomas Jefferson? <laughs> Cannabis sativa, also known as marijuana. Why am I not surprised? Interesting, very interesting. What's that? A real academic takes pride in what he knows. To be shown a neophyte publicly? Well, that would be simply unbearable. But you're unfazed. Who are you trying to please? Ah, so that's it. Who is it, Mr. Jefferson? Your mother? No? Daddy's little boy? Oh, this was a class on Poe, not some sort of psych class. Oh, it is, Mr. Jefferson. It is indeed. Next week is the pendulum. Don't forget to pretend to read it. Oh, and Mr. Jefferson, tell the paterfamilias, sorry, daddy, I said, hello. Brittany. I couldn't help but notice that you're struggling in my class. Struggling? The only thing I'm struggling with is your utterly irrational grading policy. Yeah. See, students like to blame the teacher for their poor performance, but most folks, grad schools, employers, see right through that. They know a poor student when they see one. Poor student? I was valedictorian in my high school and maintained a 4.0 here until your bass-ackwards class. Hmm. 
You got some fire in you. Hmm. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I know your GPA, Brittany. I also know you got that cow of a registrar to count my class toward multiple requirements. Four, if memory serves. You see, that's a double-edged sword. You cut out the number of courses you need, but your grade in here is four times as valuable. Are you threatening me? Of course not. I'm merely concerned, that's all. Concerned with your future. Now, I'm sure we can fix your little grade problem, but it would require, say, private tutoring? I'd be willing to offer some one-on-one -on -one assistance. Oh, you don't have to thank me. Just think it over. Knowing your future is secure is thanks enough. Once again, ASS rears its ugly head, but tenures a bitch. Don't go in there. Well, it looks like he got that one. Who would have known that zombies like vegans? You ever I don't know how you watch this crap every single night, next man. Next time on Doctor Destruction. I've been worried about you, Joe. Grades are slipping. You think Lynch is out to get you? As an Academy addition, I fear you're selling yourself short. Hey, what give? Really? What? Lynch says I'm gifted. <laughs> what are you gifted at, man? Scoring weed and, and, and sleeping through class? I mean, he's messing with you. But why can't I be gifted? Okay, look, do you think you're more gifted than, you know, Brittany? Leave her out of this. Leave who out of this? Joe. What, man? What are you talking about? I'm gonna share my stakes with you, but not if you're gonna be a dick. Speaking of which, they're burning. Crikey! Ooh. You all right? Yeah. All right, hold on. His mushrooms are awesome, Dude, man. Dude, those are mushrooms. Sorry, man, what, I can't eat any mushrooms? I didn't know you like boomers. Boomers? Yeah, boomers. Shrooms. God's LSD. Got them from Brown. Shrooms. Shrooms? Did I just eat shrooms? Are you kidding me, man? You gotta give a guy a heads up. <sighs> what is gonna happen? Hopefully good things. Or you could freak out and have a psychotic episode. Oh, what? It really happens, though. I think you'll be fine. I'll just, like, draw a line in the sand and say, I like you. If you like me, cross the line. I'm not sure that easy. Why isn't it? Ugh. Been here for like four hours. I don't feel a thing. I think Brown screwed you, man. I think you really dodged a... Midget. What do you mean? You know, little people. Little people. 
Is it politically incorrect? Politically incorrect. I don't know, I'm not dumb. I'm, I'm not, you know, whatever you call them. Door? Door? No. No, that's not right. That can't be right. Maybe only they're allowed to say it when they see each other, like, hey, my midget. Hey, I'm midget. Oh, midget, please. My midget. I don't want to be a botanist. I don't want to be a botanist. Ten words. You're on your way to being an academy initian, Joe. I can never say those ten words to my dad. He's, he's too proud of me, you know? I'm gonna piss. I feel your pain. You heard me right. I feel your pain. What? He doesn't feel your pain. My dad? The man's a f psychopath. Which? If you think you can win him over, you're living in a dream world. My dad loves him. What am I supposed to do? You need to make him feel pain. My professor, I can't you can't be a pussy about this, this Joe. That's why you do exactly as I say, won't you? Won't you, Joe? Uh, Are you listening to me, Dad? Do you know who I am? Not, not really. I am Doctor Destruction. I'm a national f***ing treasure. I'm only going to say this once. You've got to put this prick in his place, or he'll f***ed all over you. Believe me, I know. No Lynch? I know him from back when we were mainstreaming B-rate horror films. Man owes me hundreds, and he stole the love of my life. Now it's not just enough to humiliate him. When it comes to the truly deranged like Lynch, you need to have dirt on him. Now listen carefully, Zack. This is what you do. Come here, come here, you're not gonna believe who's here. What? He was just here. Is that the time? Is that the time? No, 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 grab your stuff, we gotta get to class. What, are you kidding? I don't go to class, I'm still tripping bomb. Yeah, so am I, apparently. Okay, you said this was only gonna last eight hours. Not an exact science. Oh, we're so screwed. Okay, okay, it doesn't matter. Lynch said if we miss class, we fail. Don't forget about the Widowmaker. Come on. Stop the morning. Something. We'll deal with him later. Right, huh? Bud, your face. I'm a beautiful man. No, Bud, your face. Your, your face. Your face. Your face. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's like the Sahara. It's so hot. We're never gonna make it, Bud. You just stick with me, Bud. 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 I'm glad you asked. You didn't, but I'll tell you anyway. I was really into, well, women who were on the same plane as me years ago. And then I found I'd rather be in the same plane as women who are on different trains, if, if you understand what I'm getting at. And if you don't, oh, that's your problem, isn't it? When you really think about it, why do I care? So before getting into botany and then literature, I was a dancer in a club. This was years ago before Chip and Dales and those kind of clubs started flourishing. And I had a special way of making You'd understand that, wouldn't you, Ashbeer? 
There's something different about you, bud. New haircut? No? It'll come to me. The reason that I was into dancing and really enjoying myself while I was doing it is because the ladies really got off on it. And I know you two can understand that because I've watched the way you watch me move across the class. When I'm making the little move, even though my back is to you, I can tell that you're watching everything I do. And it's, it's important for me to know that you care, and I care that you care. Not as much as you care about what I care about, but I care that you care. So when you think about all these things coming together, literature, botany, and dancing, it's all a dance we do in life. So with that in mind, class dismissed. Hey! What the hell? It's not safe here. The ears have walls. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, where are we? Oh, no, no. Fine. I'll hold a fire. Or we could do lights. Yeah, that's good. Sit, sit. So, why is this necessary again? Because you never know who could be listening. There are eyes everywhere. You're right there, big guy. You're sweating like a capitalist in Cuba. Are you Cuban? No. It's just really, really hot in here, okay? It's freezing in here. Are you high? In a sense, maybe. What? No. What? Hey! Focus! The shoes took a little bit to kick it. Hey! Get a hold of yourself, man! Hey. Yeah, shrooms. No? Why? Are you? <laughs> hey. Hey, what the hell are you, huh? Are you just a black guy? I'm sorry. Was there a plan or something? Because if not, I've got stuff to do. Right. Yeah, the plan. The plan. The plan. Here's the plan. You're not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Not a thing. I'm not. No words? No, nothing. I thought I was. It was in my head. Birds. Sorry. Here's the plan. A dead bolt. Don't worry. <sighs> Can't believe I'm saying this, but it's actually an okay plan. Are you kidding? I mean, first of all, he's on shrooms. True. So, all things considered, I guess it's a good plan. Ad hominem. It, but think about what we're saying here. I mean, he's a prick, but he's still our professor. I'm with Ashbeer. Well, I'm not. Really? Yes, really. Look. This guy is out of control. Someone needs to put him in his place, and if this will do that, it's enough for me. This plan is very, very illegal, and you, Brittany, of all people, should know that. I do. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. I hate him as much as the next person, but some bad grades and asinine behavior does not justify this. Are you gonna tell him? Lynch is trying to blackmail me into having sex with him. What? What's that? Well, what do you think, boys? Does that justify it? Yes. No. No, no, that's horrible, but if we do this, what he has on us is just as bad. Just as bad? Just as bad as him trying to coerce me into bed with him? No, definitely not. Okay, not just as bad, but this is crazy. Okay, you're right. It's... Did you know he was blackmailing Dr. Rosenberg, too? Who, what, what, why? Oh, for sex. Sex. Bastard. Okay. Okay, if, if we can cover this up, 
properly. I'm in. I think we can do that. Is everybody in? All right. Let's get to work. in her skull. He then does what any sane gentleman would do. Walls are up in the basement. On that note, go. Enjoy your weekend frolicking in mindless debauchery. Well, hello, Brittany. Professor Lynch, I've thought it over. And I've decided I'd like to take you up on your offer for tutoring. I'd hate to see my grade in here derail my future plans. No, no, certainly not. You've made an excellent choice. Mm. Well, I figured since it's the weekend, we could get started right away. So eager. Mm. I've written down my address. I spent last night preparing all the tools we'll need to whip a naughty girl like me into shape. Huh. You don't say. Oh, I do say. Trust me, by tonight, I'll earn that A for sure. See you later, Reggie. <sighs> Take the bait? Unfortunately, yes, you did. Looks like she's having second thoughts. About what? About her outfit. She's not dressed yet. Dang it. What? <laughs> okay, we're back, and it looks like we're in business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yes, I'm here. Here we are. Oh, don't be bashful. <sighs> of course. <laughs> mm. What is she wearing? Mm. I did not pick that up. The athletic look. Oh, I like it. <laughs> you know, I was afraid you wouldn't come. Okay, that's our cue. Let's do it. <sighs> Should we make this an oral exam? I'm sorry. I'm on throw up a bit. <laughs> Dirty girl. <laughs> Take all the time you need. Oh. I'm gonna savor this. Mm. You know, wait. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to make the terms of our agreement clear. If we have sex, I get an A. Mm. In all four classes. Right. Well, let's seal this deal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh my gosh, you better hide. Come, come quick, quick, quick. Quick, get in the closet. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. Get in here. What's this tank doing in here? Oh, you'll have to wait and see. You really are a freak. You have no idea. All right, let's get digging. Couldn't we just leave him in there? Does have an appeal. Unless we want to kill him. Well, that's something to think about. It's not funny. Look who lost his sense of humor. My sense of humor is in there with him. OK. Think about doing a German accent. Oh, oh. I like yeah? it. Just keep digging, please. I hope he learned his lesson. <laughs> yeah.
Got it. Oh, Dr. Lynch! <laughs> Dr. Lynch, we're going to get you out of here momentarily. But first, we'd like to have a little talk. You've been a very, very naughty boy, Dr. Lynch, blackmailing your students for sex. Those kind of things can ruin a man's career. Now, we're willing to forget the whole thing under certain condition. What do you say, Dr. Lynch? Oh, Dr. Lynch! Dr. Lynch! Put your mask on, put your mask on. Yeah, you know, give me the, uh... Yeah, yeah, Thanks. Thanks. Badass? Yeah. Cool. Huh? Ready? Huh? How did this happen? How did this happen? Did you fill the tanks? You have to fill them? Fine! <laughs> what are we gonna do now? I don't know. I don't know! I don't know! This was a stupid plan. This was a stupid plan. I can't believe this. You guys, I think I'm gonna be sick. I can't believe this. This is your idea. Stop. Stop. Oh my god. We listened to a guy on shrooms. Yeah, why would you do that? Okay. Okay, I think it's obvious what we have to do. We just... We rebury him. What? You heard me? Yeah, I think I heard you say you want to rebury him. Are you crazy? Am I crazy? You're the one that took us to the scary chair room. You were on shrooms. It was your plan! <laughs> Winona's right. No. No, Winona's not right. We gotta go to the police before this gets worse. He is dead. It doesn't get any worse than this. I think manslaughter or whatever this is, is better than murder. I am not going to jail for manslaughter or anything else. I worked too hard my whole life to be taken down by this asshole. I'm gonna get sick too. Besides, who's gonna believe this was an accident? We buried him. This is bullshit. Bullshit? Fine, but do you want to explain it to the cops? Do you, Joe? No, no. The right, the right, man. Let's just, let's just, let's just rebury him and we pretend this whole thing never happened. You guys are assholes. All right, fine, fine, fine. Bury him, shit! Uh. Hey, come on. Grab your shovel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. You got yeah. plenty of room. Plenty of room. You got room. You got room. Stop you got the van! Stop the van! What? Get okay. off guard. Okay. 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 What? Well, no, no. What is it? I think I saw someone. Where? I don't see anyone. I don't see anybody either. You sure you saw something? I don't. I don't know. I thought I did. No, it was your imagination. Okay. Your imagination. Don't. Don't freak out on us already. Well, no, no, come on. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, come on. So the five tried to carry on as if nothing had happened. Sorry. But something had happened. Something indeed. So, uh, I propose that we review where things stand in the course. Hey, who is this guy? It's the TA. What's the TA? Dr. Lynch began with the basics. We found that many of Poe's short stories follow a similar pattern. 
There's the introduction of characters. Always present is some deep-seated animosity which morphs into murder. The murder is then followed by an attempted cover-up. Paranoia ensues. And then when the main character, or characters, can take no more, a dramatic confession. Holy crap. As you can see, a major theme for Poe is the proverbial wisdom. Your sins will find you out. But doesn't anyone ever get away with it? Well, no. That's the point. Oh, come on. That's just not realistic. I mean, people get away with things all the time, right? The average percentage of solved murder cases per state is only 39%. Really? That's it? Yeah, I looked it up. Oh. Well, I suppose if you're speaking in legal terms, but I think Poe would say that the weight of conscience is its own punishment. Hmm. Great. Hello! Hi. Are you all right, young man? I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. Uh, perhaps you should go get some air. Good, good idea. As in the telltale heart. Yes? Sorry, Eugene, may I interrupt? Uh, Dean Wood, come in, come in. Some of you may be wondering why your TA, Mr. Chang, has taken over your class today. Well, it seems that Dr. Lynch has taken an unexpected and indefinite leave of absence. Therefore, until he returns, Mr. Chang will be teaching the class. We do expect him to reemerge shortly. But until then, I would appreciate if you could please give Mr. Chang your undivided attention. Excuse the interruption. Carry on. Thank you. So, uh, where were we? Uh, oh, yes, uh, paranoia. So that brings us to this week's assignment. I want you to write a position paper on the effects of paranoia and conscience and whether these two are as potent a catalyst for confession as Poe suggests. What's going on? I think we need to talk. Everybody's freaking out a little bit. So you thought it would be a good idea to get the conspirators together? Oh, don't. Please don't call. I'm not a cons... Don't call us. We're not conspirators. We just need to figure out what the hell we're going to do. What we're going to do? We're going to act normal. And we were gonna stop having paranoid gatherings where we talk about the fact that we killed someone. Shh. Look, look, nobody knows anything, right? Nobody suspects anything. I don't think I can do this, guys. If the cops don't get us a paranoia well, maybe we should just turn ourselves in. I agree. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're a bunch of pussies, and I am not going down with this ship. Besides, Joe is right. No one knows anything. Yeah. We gotta keep it together here, guys. Okay, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but maybe if we turn ourselves in, they wouldn't arrest us for murder. That, 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 that's good, K keep talking. Well, we just go there and we, we explain to them that it was all an accident and then they totally believe us. Yeah, and I hate to keep bringing this up, but we buried him. Oh, I'm sorry. We accidentally built a coffin, dug a hole, and buried our professor alive. We were going to put his feet in cement and toss him in a Lake Michigan, but we couldn't find a cement truck in time, so... We what? Plead temporary stupidity? That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, okay, I think we all can agree. We're under a lot of pressure here. Okay, but we need to stick together. All right, nobody is going to turn anybody in. Right. Okay? This is going to blow over soon. So just go to your next class, act like everything is normal, We'll talk soon, all right? Okay, does anyone want to get something to eat? I am an anxious eater, yes. Oh, by the way, man, Dean Wood said you dropped your books or something in the hallway. They're in her office. I tried to pick them up for you, but she said something about confidentiality or something, so you gotta go grab those later. So the lesson here is to tie up those loose ends. No one gets away with murder, kids, unless they tie up those loose ends. You don't have any loose ends, do you? My notebook. What? 
Well, my notebook for, for, from, from Dean Wood's office, eh? It has my notes on the plan. But you took notes? You don't take notes in class. Why would you take notes on the plan? It was a lot to remember. Are you kidding me, bud? What's in there? Is it enough to link us to Lynch or, or to find out where he's buried? Yeah, it, 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 there might have been enough. Crap, bud! Okay. Okay, maybe she hasn't seen it yet. We gotta get in the office. We gotta take it before she does. When? Tonight. for this all week. Me too. Oh. You were really good last time. <laughs> oh. Where did we leave off? Ah, I believe mm. you were in this position. <gasps> like this. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Prepare to be Dominated. Oh. Ready? I'm always ready for this. Oh. The door opens, and you see an orc who is, who is surprised by seeing you there. Now, along with the orc is four more orcs <sighs> and an old man in a colorful robe. Your move. I rush through the doorway and attack the old man. Oh, make a speed check. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Always hold the door. Uh. Perhaps we should pause there for tonight. <laughs> Same time next week. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Mm. What happened? I'll tell you next week. Oh. Ah. So I took the position that it's not really believable. Why is that? Because I presume all perpetrators suffer from some kind of paranoia, but not all perpetrators are caught. Well, except in Poe's world. Thank you. Well, I don't know if that's fair. It's not as if Poe is the only one who takes this position. Some older movies follow similar themes. I think of the work of uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock was a Catholic, and his religious commitments often played out in the same way. No one ever really gets away with anything. Vice is its own punishment. If the cops don't get you, paranoia, or given his worldview, God will. I'm not buying it. If a person has enough determination... Well, I, I don't think it's a matter of determination. The weight of guilt is such that most either let themselves get caught or turn themselves in. One can maintain the facade of innocence for only so long. No sane person can live with that kind of psychological distress. Maybe impose stories, but not in real life. You think someone could deal with that sort of guilt in real life? Because I don't think they can. I think they can if they grow a pair. Whoa. Wait, is it a matter of balls or basic human decency? Human decency doesn't go around killing people. Okay. Name one person that can deal with that kind of guilt in real life. No problem. 
the Boston Strangler, BTK, Jack the Ripper, the Greenville Killer. Oh, are these your new heroes? Are these new heroes? Screw you. Hey. What's gotten into you guys? Yes? Dean Wood. Mr. Chang. Everyone. The situation regarding Dr. Lynch has taken a turn for the worst. Officers. Yesterday, Reginald Lynch's body was discovered in a forest on the western end of the campus grounds. Oh, that's terrible. Did he, um, die of natural causes? The body was buried in a makeshift coffin along with an empty canister of oxygen. We suspect foul play. You okay, son? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, he's fine. They were just really close. Okay. If anyone can think of anything suspicious that's been going on, don't hesitate to contact me or Detective Michaels. Thank you, officers. Students, we want the depraved individuals responsible for this brought to swift justice. We bury him. If crazy? you think you know anything He's dead. at all, we gotta go to the police please. before this gets worse. Do not hesitate to come Yeah, I think forward. I heard you say you want to rebury him. Are you crazy? It's the right thing to do. No one knows anything. It's the right thing to do. We are screwed. I know. I think I'm gonna puke. Oh, come on. They've got nothing on us. They have the oxygen tanks. They can trace those. That only traces back to Bud. Bud used my credit card to rent them. Okay. That traces back to you. But the rest of so us... you want me to take the fall for this? I'm the one who said this was a bad idea in the first place. And I'm the one who said we should all turn ourselves in. Fine. Turn yourself in. It's a lot better than having us all take the fall. Oh, that's how you want to play this, Brittany? Shh. Okay, nobody's gonna ask Ashbury to take the fall, Thank you. right? Besides, they have to know it was more than one person anyway. We just have to think. And we know me is screwed. And, well. What? I'm pretty sure Dean Wood was staring right at me when she was holding Lynch's pocket watch. I think she thinks I'm involved somehow. <sighs> oh crap, my incense thrower. What? Th the one I threw in the grave. It was a rental. You can rent those? Okay. Bud's up a creek as well. I can't go to prison. I'm too pretty for prison. Look at me. Hold on now. If anyone's too pretty for prison, it'll be Ashbeer. Yeah, but at least he has his brothers to look after him. Who the hell do you think I'm from? We don't know. You won't tell us. Focus, people. Shh. I have yet to hear any evidence linking Winona or me to the crime. You're right. There's no evidence. Except for the rest of us. Why don't I just go pay Officer Williams a little visit, cut myself a deal, roll over on the rest of you. You can't cut deals for common criminals. You have to be a mob boss or the Zodiac Killer or something. It doesn't matter. What? Remember how I said there was someone in the woods? Someone who saw us? Yeah, you imagined that. You hoped I imagined. The old man who was with the cops today? It was him. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure which means we're all screwed. Shit. Okay. Well, that's it then. I think they'll go easier on us if we turn ourselves in. Thank you. Really, Joe? Because of your vast experience with murder charges? Where does this wealth of knowledge come from? TV? Movies? What other options do we have, Brittany? I mean, that's it. <laughs> I think this might be our last taste of freedom for a very, very long time. I say we take the next 24 hours to get our affairs in order, do whatever we gotta do before the shit hits the fan, okay? We'll meet back in my dorm this time tomorrow. Sorry.
took everything and I spun it around. Yeah, I spun it all around, save for you. I left you alone till you swelled up and grown into all that I felt it all through. And when all was well, I was high as could be, and I wanted to never return. But I guess that I flew a bit too close to the sun and got burned, I got burned, I got burned. Are you not aware all that I've had my share? But it's just I don't share it with you. And how can you say that I am this way when I try and you know that I do? I don't want it to end. I don't want it to do I, but you know you can't change what must be. Why must it be? Just a memory you see and it's quickly fading It's comfort evading I am left here in the cold I wish I could take it all away every step you walk further away And it's all I can do Just to hold on I'm falling apart Half of the world's underwater And the rain is still coming Brittany, where are you going? Class. Class? Brittany, why would you go to class? Have you forgotten? The... No, bad. I haven't forgotten. What else am I supposed to do? It's all I have. All you have? Yeah. You tell me. What else do I have? Your class. Damn it. For twenty years I hid behind the mighty fortress of the mind, and I baffled many as to where I was. Numbers tried if you broke through, but the most had not a clue. Time overtook them as time so often does. But as I began to see, I only wanted to be free, and I grew weary of all my ambivalence. Oh, I grew weary of ambivalence. found the door and darkness took me as I lay broken and alone but when I died Rah! I was reborn hey. the and was it's all this it's my stash I won't be needing it good for you it's been a good friend you go get me some am I still a soul transformed a wheel spun or am I the slave I was when I begun? Or am I the slave I was when I begun? I'm sorry, but I need to speak with Brittany Wilcox. Young man, we're in the middle of class. Besides, Ms. Wilcox isn't here at the moment. Dr. Rosenberg! Yes? Communism possesses a language which every people can understand. Its elements are hunger, envy, and death. Heinrich Heine. 
The first time I heard your voice, it was like hearing Mao announce the dawn of the People's Republic of China. And in my heart, I knew that the communist revolution was complete and there was no going back. Now put away your Mina Harker, because I'm about to rock you like Lucy Westenra. never had the guts to say it. You know, I've, I've been thinking a lot about my life, about my choices, and I'm tired of living in fear. Fear of what? Fear of what you might say if you ever found out how I feel. Now, the only thing I'm afraid of is going another day without you knowing. Brittany, the only thing I really want is to be with you, and if you want to be with me too, And cross that line. But I don't know what to say. It's not that I don't have feelings for you, but I'm worried about you. I mean, frankly, I think you might have a drug problem. I gave that up. All of it. It's gone. Brittany, you're the only drug I need. Really? I didn't think you'd do that. It's too bad you waited till now to tell me. I guess there's always parole. Seen you in a while. You're a college girl now, right? Ever hear the one about the co eds Stop. who wanted Don't to. Don't say another word, just sit, <laughs> okay, and listen. Can you turn that off, please? Sure. What's up? You're an ass. And I don't mean you suffer from some made up bullshit syndrome, okay? I mean you're an ass. It's what you choose to be. Okay, wait a minute, this is my stop. house. Stop, please stop, I, I need to say this, okay? And if you talk, I'm never gonna be able to get it out. Why can't you be nice to people? Why do you have to treat people like they don't matter? Like, like, like they don't feel things? That's not a syndrome, Dad, that's a choice. Okay, Winona, obviously don't. you- don't say another word. I wanted you to love me. Okay, I always wanted that. And I didn't even care if you loved me in your own asinine way, but I don't know if you're capable. No, I, I, don't, I don't know if you're willing to. Mom wanted the same thing. She left because of you. You never cared about her or about me. It was always about you. It was only ever about you. That's not ass syndrome, okay? That's you syndrome. I left because I hated you. 
Life sucks being around people like you, and I don't want to be like that. Are you finished? No. No, I'm not. Look, I found myself in a very bad place recently, and I don't want to get into it. But I've... I've come to realize that all I've ever wanted was to hurt you. But you didn't even care in the first place, so... For all my hurt and all my hate, it never did anything to you. It only hurt me. It's all just another way in which you've managed to hurt me, so... I've decided to let it go. I forgive you. Can I say something? No. No. From my experience with you, whatever you're about to say is going to be unhelpful at best, so... For my sake and yours, I just... I need to go. Now. Wait! Thank you. I don't want to be a botanist. Don't want to be a botanist. Dad? Don't want to be a botanist. Just ten words. Seven words. Okay. Dad? Dad? Mom? Hey, hey show! This is a surprise? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you run out of clean underwear? Mom's not here. No, no. Well, yeah, I did, like two weeks ago, but that's not why I'm here, Dad. I, I gotta tell you something. Oh, I bet. Probably got lots of great stories. Stories about Lynch? Actually, yeah. I want to hear all about it. Classes, students, Lynch, everything. But we're going to need to do it a little bit later. I got this thing. I, holy smoke. Hold that thought. I got to get ready. Well, we'll talk later. Oh, Dad, I really... <laughs> it was time to face your demons. So you gave your demons a face. Oh, such a wretched place Now I'm struggling to find The good in my veins But doesn't it seem such a waste? Oh, I think it would be such a waste of a savior oh good god above what's it look like i'm made of i would have spit you out by now for your bitter as hell but you're a flavor i crave all too well Something worth fighting for I used to be
you okay? I don't want to be a botanist. What? Joe, what's going on? Are you okay? Joe? <sighs> Joe, what's going on? What is all this? Well, when did you start drinking? Hey, you answer me. I'm not sending you to college so you can become a drunk. What the hell's going on? Joseph? I don't want to be a botanist. I don't want to be a botanist. Never have, Dad. I don't understand. I wanted to tell you, and I, I didn't want to disappoint you. Joey. You work so hard, and I'm wasting your money on a degree that I don't even want. I didn't want to let you down. Damn it! You don't have to be like me. Joey, come on. It's okay, really. Talk to me. What do you want to be? I hadn't really thought about it. I like making dioramas. Well, when you drink like that, I'm not surprised. Dioramas, Dad. But take it easy. I'm just joking with you. Now, what the hell is a diorama? <laughs> It's one of those. Oh, this thing? That's actually not that bad. Ain't the most cheerful thing I've ever seen, but not bad. You know, if you wanted a more realistic look, you could put real asphalt on the street here. I could show you how to do that. That I've messed up. I did something really stupid. I don't know how to fix it. I don't think it can be fixed. Well, I hope it isn't as morbid as your, your artwork, whatever it is. <laughs> Come on. I'm sure we'll get through it. You want a piece of cheesecake? Shit. Don't stand there gawking. Come in and sit down. Dr. Lynch, they said you were dead. What a pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise? What the hell is going on? <laughs> Allow me to explain. I'll begin by introducing Dr. Brown, world famous botanist, visiting professor, and my longtime research partner and friend. Research partner? We've studied the benefits of cannabis, LSD, opiates, quaaludes, Italia. But it was my foray into literature which gave rise to the plot in which you find yourselves entwined. Ms. Wilcox. What? You questioned whether my class was immersive. 
You see, I came to realize early in my tenure that students hardly take their own life seriously, yet less the life of a dead poet. <laughs> yeah. He's right. I thus devised a way for them to truly enter Poe's stories, to wit, by living them. The steps were simple. Exacerbate students to the point of despair, plant a seed for revenge, let it blossom into murder, and fertilize it with paranoia. <laughs> the necessary tensions required a bit of research. Ashbeer, I recognized your infatuation for Dr. Rosenberg immediately. I merely needed to ensure that you landed in my class. The rest was easy. Oh, no, that was because of a computer, computer glitch. Yeah, how did you know that? Oh, it was no glitch. You can thank Dr. Brown for the error. I have an associate's degree in computer science. Oh, so this also explains all the racial slurs. What racial slurs? Brittany was easy. Not as easy as you'd think. Good student, driven. I merely needed to threaten her GPA. <laughs> oh, keeners are so vulnerable, they have no idea what really matters. <laughs> I was a keener. When Nona added color to our plan. Really? I had an encounter with your father some years back, and based on the exchange, I was certain he suffered from ASS. So, that brings us to Bud. We chose a different strategy in his case. Unmerited praise. <laughs> I told you. Now, that leaves Joe. I've received fan mail from your father for years. I initially thought you were in my classroom to win my approval. When I realized it was to win his? Well, done. <laughs> this is ridiculous. None of this explains how the plan emerged in the first place. I mean, the plan was Joe's idea. Was it Joe? Was it? Was it? Well, it wasn't entirely my idea. I might have gotten inspiration from somebody else. You mean Dr. Destruction? Yes. Yes, how do you know it's that? It's not what you know, but who you know. You see, we knew that Bud was a regular viewer of Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater, and, uh, well, the good doctor is an old friend of mine. Okay, I'll do it, but only if you pay me what you owe me. Done. So, we're even? As close as money will get you, your debt goes way beyond dollars and cents. What? Eloise? You still gnawing on that bone? <laughs> My solicitation of Brittany provided the missing piece. Opportunity. I can't believe this. I don't understand. I checked your pulse. You were dead. Niagara. The unfortunate side effect that ruined me was that the drug-induced catalepsy. What's catalepsy? A state in which one's bodily functions slow down so much they seem dead. We merely modified the Niagara formula to enhance the effect. Mm. You were catatonic when we buried you? Lord, no. I'm a professional. I had complete control over my faculties when you stuffed me into that sorry excuse for a coffin. It's a pretty good coffin. I arrived soon after to unbury him. I opened the coffin, administered the Niagara, and then reburied him. It's flawless. I wish. When I got back to my car, I realized I left the keys in the coffin with him. I had to unbury him again to retrieve him. <laughs> so we unburied Dr. Lynch to find him seemingly dead. Figured that out all by yourself, did you, bud? So we reburied you, what, a fourth time? And I arrived soon after to unbury him again. Uh, how, how many times is that? that uh, we buried, then unburied, then reburied, then unburied, then reburied, then unburied. Yeah, great. Then, uh, why would you do this to us? We, uh... I plan to publish the results in an academic journal which has a small but influential readership. Over my dead body. I'm going to sue you psychopaths. Clearly, you don't remember signing a release form. It detailed the plot in its entirety. It seems none of you read it. <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> well, I never signed that. That's right. You didn't. You signed a late registration form. In it, you agreed to abide by all 
course requirements. This is crazy. This is crazy. How could the administration let this happen? Joe, higher education requires resources. Now, we are blessed to have a very generous donor who is willing to give us these resources on the condition that we continue with this rather unusual experiment. Holy shit. Holy shit. Um, Greetings, young people. Our future. Mm -hmm. I first became aware of Dr. Lynch's immersive techniques in June of this past year. I was struck by his promise for awakening students to the brevity of life. A lesson most of us fail to learn until it's too late. I'm afraid. I was eager to do my part and see his efforts succeed. So when Dean Wood poked me about funding for the new sports complex, I approved a sizable donation on the conditions that Drs. Lynch and Brown continue their research on a group such as yourselves that was great with promise. Oh, they've assured me that you'll all get top marks from the class. Yeah. Of course. But more importantly, I'm sure you'll find upon reflection that your lives have been enriched, changed by the experience. Perspective. Second chances. These are rare gifts. But make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, time is short. And it is precious. The brevitate vita. Live as if death comes tomorrow. And you find a far greater clarity when discerning life's past. I sincerely hope you remember that. Au revoir. Your island is beautiful. Yakui. I still don't know where you're from. I don't know what he said. It took time for the students to get over the shock of their immersive experience. Yet as shock gave way to perspective, the students gained an ever-increasing appreciation for the lessons Poe had taught them. Having stood face to face with the transient nature of life, they found themselves freed from the bonds that had long held them captive and which threatened to hold them for years to come. While it cost me a few million dollars, I like to think their newfound clarity was worth yet another sports complex. <laughs> I hid behind the mighty fortress of the mind And I baffled many as to where I was The numbers tried if you broke through But the most had not a clue Time overtook them as time so often does Well I blended in, I carried on With doing nothing that was wrong Well being everything and nothing all at once But as I began to see I only wanted to be free And I grew weary of all my ambivalence